Привет, товарищи, and welcome back to yet another video, where today we're going to be watching a video about migration and identity politics and how it's threatening the idea of Europe. Um, basically a bunch of writer's copium, I think. This guy does look like the average, um, writer's voter, so I might, I'd be glad to be surprised, but, but let's see. <laughs> How often the left tells us in the off to a great start the West that colonization what a terrible sin and maybe it has a point I agree I mean don't we see it right now no we don't or maybe somewhere but I think your point might be about migrants colonization you know, we see foreign peoples landing by boat in countries very different from their own. Yeah, okay, you're talking about colonization by migrants. Okay, so colonization is a bit more um, organized than that. Um, so if if a community of like five people sail over the Mediterranean, that's not col uh, col colonialism. That's called escaping fucking uh, colonialized nations um also imperialism is very much still real um i uh, i uh, saw a um i think it was uh the leader of italy um meloni or something um she said that uh she doesn't like the idea of col uh, colonialism she doesn't like migrants which is a, a bad thing she doesn't like black people because she's a racist but she did have a very interesting point the reason they're coming here or to europe specifically um is because uh their homelands have been colonized and thus are way worse off so if they were to help the african countries then they wouldn't have that issue um of course it's built on a very much a racist principle but i do like the idea of actually helping the africans instead of like saying yeah no go fix it yourself and then when they come to europe be shocked and say oh, how dare you colonize my continent which is so pure and white like in italy now or in spain or even britain people sailing in uninvited out to get the riches that are what what riches most people come to these countries and work minimum wage jobs for the, their entire lives. They mostly do it for their families and children. And, like, they don't get rich off of fucking welfare. They're there, including this time the welfare system that the locals built for themselves. Oh, how terrible. They want free health care? No, they shan't be getting our free health care. They will die on the streets like the true rats they are. Some writers, probably. And like colonialists, we see many of them, particularly from the Middle East and particularly Muslim, including millions who actually came legally, by the way, through Europe's wide open doors. They're creating their own enclaves, their own communities, their own colonies. Really? No, 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 no. Uh, are you referring to ghettos formed by them being poor? This this guy is the type of guy to say, oh, the South Africans are being colonized by black people. Haven't you seen Cape Town? It's segregated along uh, racial lines. This means the black people are colonizing the white, pure African continent. This is Trafalgar Square, the heart of London, and it's the Muslim call to prayer. <laughs> In some towns and suburbs of France, areas dominated by Africans, by Muslims, like here in Toulouse, the police are often treated as a hostile force. Because they sometimes are. Not welcome and increasingly afraid to even turn up and enforce the law. But about this colonization, the left is very hypocritical. The left is very hypocritical. Okay, um... If if you're gonna be playing the hypocritical card, let's let's talk about the Aboriginals, maybe. Because uh, listen to the silence. 
In fact, if you even mention this colonization, you're damned. What? Where? In fucking Atlantis? Like, where? Like, if you even mention this um, colonization, you're damned. You're not fucking damned. You're not in hell. And yet, we're seeing in Europe right now, and increasingly in Australia and the United States as well, a reverse colonization that along with the rise of identity politics is threatening Europe in particular like Europe has not been threatened for centuries. It's threatening the identity and even the idea of Europe. Now, of course, it's the idea. How is this challenging the idea of Europe? If your idea of Europe is based on being white as fucking snow, then yes, this is threatening the idea of Europe. But it's just threatening your idea of Europe. Europe is a continent. It's not a fucking, like, race or something. That's Europeans, and that's also not a race. It's called being human. It's, it's just... <sighs> I'm... <sighs> okay. This can be dismissed, and often is. Often is. But also, we're just two minutes in. This is, this is off to a great start. Scaremongering, an exaggeration, uh, it's right-wing racism even. Just shut up about it. But let me show you the facts that explain why right now across Europe, anti-immigration politicians are suddenly winning elections. Like George Maloney in Italy and just last... Yeah, no, I can't speak on the Italian situation much, but... Um, I don't think it's purely to do with colonization. I think it might also have something to do with the perceived um, success of the fascist regimes in the past as compared to all the other regimes. Um, although that might not be true, please do correct me in the comments. It's November, the shock victory in the Netherlands of the anti-immigration and anti-Muslim Geert Wilders. The particular shock in a country that's long been famous for being so tolerant, but now feels it's paying the price of opening its borders. Now, th I think this, um, I think I saw a video on this. Um, that's mostly the result of uh, strategic voting, uh, which if you don't know what is, it's basically when you see um, two political parties, for example, let's say you're in America, you see the Democrats and the Republicans. You hate both but you hate one less, so you vote for that. Or let's say you're in a multi-party uh, system and you see, like, uh, you see these parties uh, are bad, you don't like them, uh, but this one is less bad and the one you really want to vote for won't get any seats or any power because of you voting for them. So you vote for the one that's like, generally represents some of your values. That's strategic voting. This mass immigration started very slowly. At also populism. He's, he's playing on populism like a shit ton. First, just after World War II, because European countries, Australia too, hungry for immigrants back then to help them rebuild and then to grow, to fill their factories. And at first it all seemed to work with all those cheap workers and, and all those nice restaurants that and the nice cuisine that came with them. We were so enthusiastic about having better cuisine. So it seemed a big win. Except as time went on, some of the factories collapsed. The jobs disappeared. In some communities, unemployment started to rise. In some communities. Interesting word choice. And the immigrants kept coming, mainly from the Muslim countries on Europe's edge, North Africa and the Middle East. This bro is staring directly into my soul and I'm not appreciating it. Um, also, what about American people moving to Europe? Are they bad too? What about people moving from Eastern Europe to Western Europe? Are they bad? Do you feel as if the um, uh, Polish people, like Polish people moving to the UK, is that a bad thing? Because, like, they're not Muslims. They're pretty much, they hate Muslims. Um, but I, I don't see you fucking talking about them. America had a different intake. Some of them hate Muslims, might I add. Like, not everyone there. Uh, Poland is a very Catholic country. Mainly from the Catholic South America. 
uh, that doesn't seem to be quite the problem that we're describing for Europe. And when I say that the numbers increased, they're extraordinary. Let's go back to 1950, right? So five years after World War II, 1950. France back then had a quarter of a million Muslims. Today, it's got more than six and a half million. They make up 10% of the population. How terrible. They try to move away from bad lives to start better ones. Oh, what? You're asking for aid? No, 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 no. That won't happen. But stay in your country. We don't want you here. And growing fast for your birth rate. Go back to 1950. Britain had 100,000 Muslims. Today, more than two and a half million. Germany went from 20,000 to more than four million. Yeah, okay, so uh, Germany is actually a very interesting case because um, Germany uh, allowed a lot of Turks to go from Turkey to Germany to both study and then work a little bit. Uh, and then a lot of them stayed in Germany. Um, the UK has a policy with a lot of its former colonies to allow them to return or come to Britain, which is why a lot of people migrate to Britain. It's not because they come on boats, and if they do come on boats, they usually do, like, they come to, uh, through the Balkan route or the Belarusian path. Like, they don't usually come through the UK. They don't sail along the coast of France up to the UK. Uh, also, after the French uh, colonial empire fell, uh, they allowed a lot of people to uh, come to France, I'm pretty sure. Uh, you can correct me on that if you want. And tiny Netherlands, just elected Geert Builders, or made his party the biggest vote winner, went from 5,000 to 1 million. Strategic voting, again. Or no, sorry, fuck. Uh, this was another um, subject. Sorry, I was a bit stuck up on the last one. These are massive numbers and big changes. Also, I would like to say um, this is very much garbage. Um, I wouldn't listen to a word he's saying, and I... I'm I'm getting brain rot. It's only four minutes in. How how great I have to watch this. Because circumstances changed. For one, the internet helped immigrants to bring their culture with them. The few that first arrived, say in nineteen fifty, they had to integrate, otherwise who would speak their language? How could they get around? They didn't have much contact with the home country. Today, completely different. Satellite TVs, internet TVs, emails constantly. Video. You do realize people speak German when they come to Germany. People speak French when they come to France. People speak English when they come to the UK. It's not like they don't learn the language. And if they don't, they usually will after some time. Like, even in Norway, um, like you can... Anyone in Norway, you can speak English to them, and most people in the world do speak English. But if you're in Norway, you usually, uh, from immigrants, you usually hear them speak Norwegian, which is like fair enough because they're in Norway. People learn the language of the country they're in, and that usually isn't a problem. I I don't see. Okay. Videos, YouTube, and. Islam, this is another change, became much more political. What? Again, here's London. Here's a rally to recruit for Muslim armies. Don't care about Rescue the people of, the, of Palestine. Yeah, is, is this a bad thing? Oh, okay, I should have watched that. Yeah, okay, I don't support um, religious much of anything. B um, I'm going to shut up on that point. Uh, I do want to make one comment. Uh, a lot of Muslim politics uh, in Europe revolve around not being oppressed, like in France, for example, where political um, garments are banned. Um, 
Only for Muslims, though, of course, because uh, nuns can walk with whatever they want. And then there was the Islamist terrorism yeah, the attacks, huge attack in Spain that really started the alarm about Islamist terrorism in a big time. And France, of course. What? I've never heard of that, this. Or suffered terribly. Britain, bombings of buses and trains. No, please tell me more about this. I've never heard about this. Sweden, Germany, other countries. Sweden, Germany, other countries. Okay, uh, could you give me any examples? Because like I've I've never heard about this, and uh, uh, I'm pretty European. In fact, just last no October, another teacher in France murdered by a man yelling "Alu Akbar." And the huh? okay, if he says so. The whole idea that the second and third generation of immigrant families that assimilate like their parents didn't or couldn't that turned out to be a fraud many no. did fantastic some great assets to the community but a significant minority did not okay so your idea of assimilation is becoming rich because there are very many poor white people in europe i do hope you know that I want to give you one example that's from Britain right now of this, this growing radicalization, including in the second and third, even maybe fourth generations. There's a school. It's led by a woman who's famous in Britain. It's the strictest principal in the country. Someone who achieved spectacular success with her students, working class, immigrant background, got them wonderful results. She is now under attack because she's banned Muslim prayers at her very multicultural school. But she said she had no choice if she wanted to save it from radical Islam. Radical Islam? Is it radical Islam to fucking... to pray five times a day? Like, if you're a Muslim, you're required to pray five times a day, which is, okay, fine, that's your culture banning a prayer in school but only muslim is that so so you didn't ban christian or any other ones because that could be make it different i don't know i i do want to hear more about this though our lovely school turned into one that was really quite horrible where well lucky me some of the more committed muslims as it were were intimidating the the Muslims who were eating and going by the break hall food stand and stopping them from eating or intimidating them into praying or we noticed one girl for instance who never wore a hijab before who was suddenly wearing one so the culture of the place changed very quickly within days from being this lovely happy place into one which was quite aggressive and intimidating Banny prayer. I don't know if that's okay. I I do I do want to say, however, I think uh, this is not representing a lot of things. Like only showing one side of the case is a bad thing, and I think that's what this is about, or what this is. I think he's only showing one side of the uh, of the case, because like you're showing people being aggressive and such, but. Most Muslims aren't aggressive uh, terrorists who kill teachers while shouting Allahu Akbar. Cause, cause if they were, then, then I don't think the government would allow them to, to immigrate here, which they are. To those screaming uh, racist, I should point out that teacher is from herself from. Indian background. I'm not telling, I'm not saying that that teacher is racist, I'm saying you're a racist. And now she's being taken to court for banning Muslim prayers at a school. Which is fair because that's a religious thing. Add to that the crime. In France, about half of all prisoners are Muslim. About <sighs> you know, there's a. Uh, causation 
to every crime. And usually that causation is uh, being poor. Uh, now, you don't choose to be poor. Unless you do, which most people don't. Um, but if... Okay, let's say you just immigrated. You have no money, no generational wealth. Do you think you're going to make it by by just, like, doing a minimum wage job? Because cause if those social um, supports were higher, then maybe you would. But I don't think they're enough right now. About half now. In Britain, Muslims are nearly three times more likely to be jailed. But Muslim political... Now, you could ask yourself, is this because they're more inherently viol violent, or is this because um, police are more um, aware of Muslims? Power also grew. And people that Muslims, immigrants, second generation, that they helped to elect, because there is a little bit of a tribal affinity with this identity politics that's happening everywhere. The people they helped to... Bro is not happy with identity politics. ...elect, tended to demand even more immigrants, particularly immigrants like them, just as the original populations of their countries had started to panic about a... What? Okay, this is outright racism. I... I... what? ...clash of values that became too obvious to ignore. Another example, in Scotland, Humza Yousaf, who's the son of Pakistani parents, now the country's first minister, prime minister, so to speak, and he's upset that his new country, or his parents' new country, is so very white at the top. In the Scottish government, every director general is white. Every chair of every public body is white. That is not good enough. Now... Okay, I think you're framing this a bit, a bit badly, my friend here. My friend Andrew Bolt. Now that he is First Minister, Yusuf is going to do something about it. And is also going to make Scotland take in more Palestinians, of all people. Interesting. There are currently one million people displaced within Gaza. Scotland is willing to be the first country in the UK to offer safety and sanctuary to those who are caught up in these terrible attacks. Would you rather them die? Like, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confused about your messaging here. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear you actually speak a little bit for yourself and not just talk about how wrong everyone else is. I should point out that his wife is of Palestinian background. So under him, Scotland's going to look more... No, I don't, I don't think this is about him being of a non-white race. I, I don't think this is about his uh, wife being Arab. I, I think this is more to do with the humanitarian crisis happening in Palestine. And if you're like, oh no, that's like, that's that's not real. That's like, because uh, the, the Israelis are actually protecting them. They're saying to uh, go to the south. Okay, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, those those uh, warnings they sent were mostly in English, uh, or I think they were in English entirely. Uh, probably just a propaganda stunt for uh, the Western audiences. Uh, secondly, they're actively bombing the southern, like, southern Gaza, which they told everyone to go to. So, so, like, your arguments don't make sense. Or, like her. Now, in London, Muslim Mayor Sadiq Khan, same story, also wants more immigrants. I have no hesitation at all in saying we need more migrants in London. Cuts them off. Cuts them completely off. But many non-Muslim voters now seem to be alarmed. Anti-immigration parties have soared in popularity in Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, other places too. I don't like this guy. Andrew Bolt is no friend of mine. 
You can dismiss all that as racism. You can put your head in the sand. You can try to shut down debate. But if you are of the left and you don't acknowledge it and try to do something about it, that's not, it's not going to stop. In fact, yeah, you're dead in 20 years. This really won't affect you. If you don't like seeing brown people walking around the streets, just say so. There's a real danger that the backlash could be quite ugly. Because maybe some of the reaction is racist. But then again, if you only scream racism, you might miss the big point. There is a fear among many people that... Many old white people, yes. Many old white people... Um, of a specific uh, political subdivision. Whose families have been there for generations and generations and generations. They are, shall we say, indigenous. There is a fear among them that the Christian Europe that their families have come from since time in... Albania is Muslim. Parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina is Muslim. The Christian Europe... Are we talking about Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, other? Like, please specify, because Christian... Like, even then, Albania is Muslim. Um, Northern, the Northern Caucasus are both uh, Muslim, some are, I think, Buddhist, even. Um, and then you have some people who still believe in... Um, what some may consider heretical faiths, such as Sami folk tradition, although I, I don't think many do. Um, probably some Inuit folk um, religion too. I, I think that's a bit of a gross oversimplification. Memorial. A Europe that produced a civilization featuring Michelangelo, Mozart, Goethe, Dickens, produced works like the Notre Dame, They'd be rolling over in the graves if they knew what you were using their names for. Probably. That nurture democracy, produce the Industrial Revolution. Okay, liberal democracy is not the same as democracy. Please make that distinction. All that may be disappearing. Or... What the fuck? Okay, bro's like saying... No, if we don't stop the migrants, then Goethe will disappear. Then Notre Dame will disappear. It's it's burnt down already, my old guy. Please take the news more seriously. Uh, and then and then democracy will disappear from this world because democracy is only a European trait, and uh, other people are not capable of having democracy in their system of governance. That's racism. Or that the home of the Italians and the Germans and the French is, will become more like a hotel, everyone in their own room. Now the fear, this fear, has risen with the huge displays, intimidating displays of Muslim numbers at the anti-Israel protests over the past couple of months. Yeah. But did you care to see how many of the people there who weren't Arabs or Muslims? Because, like, a lot of those people aren't. Not to say that most aren't. I'm just saying, like, for example, um, some of the leaders of it, a lot of the people in it. I, I don't think it's purely a Muslim thing. I think that's just, like, people who care about other people. For instance, this is London. This now is Manchester, further north, one of many country, uh, cities in Britain with a huge Muslim minority. This is Stockholm. This is a pro-Palestinian protest in Brussels, with more Palestinian flags than you'll ever see Belgium, and with more protesters waving guns as well. It could go on, massive protests, Palestine, with uh, pro-Palestinian protests in Paris, for instance, Madrid, Holland. So yes, yes, the left says colonization is so terrible. They say it destroys the culture of the indigenous people. I wonder who the indigenous people of Britain might be. That it's a... Yeah, yeah, actually, I think you're Australian. Please fucking leave into the ocean. I think, I think many people would be better off that way. Um... 
That being said, that was a joke. Um, I don't actually mean for him to go kill himself. Um, I do want to say, though, most of these points are purely bullshit. Some have some merit. Most are twisted. Uh, and then you have the odd, actually good point, which is um, to say none of these, uh, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't... When when thinking about good points, this video does not come to mind. Uh, this guy's just really afraid of people not of his own skin color. Um, they, he thinks they're the boogeyman or something. Um, please subscribe for uh, more brain rot content, and have a nice day. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Goodbye.